Hey y'all, my name is Jess. Welcome to my channel, Cozy Jess. And today our reading vlog is going to be very Kyla coded. Now for those of you who don't know, my bestie Kyla is also a booktuber, bookstagrammer, all of that. We are both a couple of cozy gals who love reading from all different types of genres. And the other day my holds from my library came in and they were very Kyla coded and I thought it was just kismet that these three book titles came in at the same time. The TBR is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, Magic Lies and Deadly Pies by Misha Pop, and What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. So we have a thriller, a cozy mystery, and a cozy fantasy. So the first book of the video is going to be Magic Lies and Deadly Pies. Well we're gonna start out running around town, going to the library to pick up the books, and then I will let Kyla introduce Magic Lies and Deadly Pies. Well, it wouldn't be a Kyla-inspired video if I didn't go visit my local library. And today I'm visiting both of them, both up. I will not be buying these books unless I love them. Even then, I'm gonna look for them used um, because I feel like I will love Legends and Lattes. So let's go get that one and what's the other book? Oh what lies in the woods. Book one, secured, Kate Alice Marshall, What Lies in the Woods. All of my friends said in wedding day, all I've got's photos of yesterday. Left all my things up at heaven's gate Hope that they let me in later Someone set my clock back 20 years All right, so now I have Legends and Lattes, What Lies in the Woods and I am listening to Magic Lies and Deadly Pies. This was such a fun, cozy mystery. I love it. If you are a lover of cozy mysteries and food, this book is for you. Not only does our main character uh, make these pies, but she also works in a diner, so there's a lot of food talk there. I have never read from Misha Pop before, but I really enjoyed her writing and her storytelling. There's also a bit of a romance in here, which is like super cute, and I really loved the mystery. I am about an hour into the audiobook, and I gotta say I'm loving it. First of all, I don't always like rate or review the narration of a book because I'm not too picky when it comes to audio but this book is fantastic her narration style is great it's amazing and I feel like this book was handpicked hand tailored just for me it's a cozy mystery type vibe there's baking involved which is a huge subgenre of cozies she lives in an RV which the campers and criminals mysteries hello and then she also has a pet cat. Now if it could talk, that would be the vibe, but I don't think it will. Our main character is magic, of course. Look, I love witchcraft. This is about a woman, a woman who bakes pies and she puts a little special something, like she sells regular pies, but she also has very special pies. I gotta turn the AC up. I'm sorry if it affects the sound but it's only 82 outside and I'm not looking forward to summer. Look at this. So I'm about an hour into the audiobook. I think I already said that, but the way that she finds new customers is like going to support group meetings for, you know, women who are victims. And she's like, here, give this pie to your abusive husband. I love it. I'm cheering her on. Bake that pie, put that magic in it. So let me tell you, she makes these pies and they will make the person that eats them look like they've died naturally. In a cozy mystery, someone is killed and then the, the person is the amateur detective, our main character. We follow them solving the mystery. So I'm curious if this is going to go along those same lines or if someone, if the pie is going to be directed at the wrong person because I don't know where that part of the mystery is going yet, but I am loving 
following her. Look at how I got to go clean my car. Look at my back window. So dirty. But I'm loving where this is going. I'm loving our main character. We might have been introduced to a possible love interest for her. Little farm boy. He's got fruits. She makes fruit pies. It's it's magic. It's kismet. You know what? My library is in the same parking lot as Barnes and Noble. I can see it right now, but I'm not going there because this is a Kyla vlog. We we got our books for free from the library. We are saving money, and I'm very excited for these books. Um, this is a thriller, cozy fantasy, and a cozy mystery. I love it. The hair has already gone up, but I'm at Goodwill. Let's see if they've got anything good. Earlier, I said that Daisy has a pet cat. Don't know what I was thinking. It's a dog. Slip of the tongue because I just associate witches with cats, I suppose. Um, but as I'm driving around, I'm, I've been listening a bit more. And she has a set of rules that she follows when it comes to who... When it comes to her pies and her magic serial killing business. Love a woman with boundaries right yes i'm gonna head up into the goodwill and then i'm gonna hit up walmart i really i i look fabulous and i was gonna find a public place to read type of thing but i'm getting i'm getting groceries and i just want to go and put those up and then i think i might work in my yard a little bit there's i have a couple of bulbs that i need to plant and like I meant to do them last week because I want to get them in the ground and get them starting to grow before the summer gets too too hot and they like just shrivel and die. I don't know if that's what happens. I'm not a profesh but I really got to go to the bathroom. Let's go to Goodwill. All right, now I'm waiting for my Walmart pickup. And honestly, I think I might buy Magic Lies and Deadly Pies, my own copy. I found one on eBay and I found the sequel book, A Good Day to Pie, I believe it's called. I found that one on eBay as well. eBay shopping is like thrifting, except the selection is much better than my thrift store. I think there was one good book there. And I didn't pick it up because it's 99 cents and I don't carry cash or anything. So I'm not going to spend a dollar on my card. Okay, I'm home. Got the books. Probably about to order Magic Lies and Deadly Pies and the sequel off of eBay. And I'm sweaty. I just brought in the groceries. And I'm going to go. Okay, I bought these bulbs for these uh, extra large elephant ears they were at sam's i think for 15 dollars for both of these maybe 10 10 15 20 i don't remember because i bought them um a couple weekends back and so i want to go plant these and i don't believe it says the lighting what this needs um but we've got dappled lighting we've got full sun so i'll figure it out and find a place for them what else was i gonna say the hair needs to go up. It is so hot. Actually, I'm just going to change out of this because I don't want to get this shirt dirty and stained working in the yard. I'm going to go change and while I'm working in the yard, I'll probably listen to Magic Lies and Deadly Vibes. I'm so excited about it. I probably won't check in today since like here in about an hour, I'm going to be dripping sweat. I'll go ahead and do what I'm going to do. And as I get further into this book, I'm going to, I'm going to check in with y'all. Also, the way, that's crazy, also the way that this book talks about issues that aren't normally in this sort of like kooky genre, I, I love that. I love, and also the way she says murder pies, like, it's just so casual, like, yeah, I'm just making my murder pies. I loved Magic Lies and Deadly Pies so much when I was about... 30% through, I bought my own copy. So let's open it together, y'all, with my very special donut frosted knife. I want to be very careful and not cut myself or the book. <sighs> okay, let's rip the rest because I, do, I make myself nervous with sharp things. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. 
Oh! 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 It's so pretty! Oh my god! It's the perfect size little hardback! Ah! Oh, I love it so much! Ooh! Okay, so now that I have my hands on this, let's go ahead and finish this book up. I have about an hour left in the audio, and then um, I'll give you my final thoughts because I I can't. They're they're the love I have for this book. <laughs> recipes in the back ah how cute is that all right y'all <laughs> i can't i can't even i i all right let's go sit over there and talk about this some more because i think i love it i think it might be a five i think this might be a five star I don't usually give a cozy mystery a five star. My favorite cozy mystery series is the witchcraft mysteries. I talk about them quite a bit, but it's more of like, there's a bit of, I can't even say nostalgia, but just like it, 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 it flamed my love for reading. And whenever I find something like this or dial A for aunties or the Thursday murder club that is different and unique, but still cozy and makes me feel comfortable reading it and not anxious because sometimes books that I read have very upsetting subject matter and that's that's fine that's good I do like to read books that make me feel uncomfortable that touch on hard subjects in a hard way but sometimes I want to be cozy and like turn off my brain from the anxiety that I feel of things and even though this book has subject matter that touches on abusive households and found family from escaping abuse and and stuff like that i just really love daisy like she's killing people but she doesn't always like her pie can make people change like if they want to change and not be abusive assholes they won't die I love that this world is essentially our world, but Daisy and her family have magic. There's probably other people in, in the world that have magic as well, but it's not like a fantastical world. Um, there's no talking goblins or um, La Llorona and stuff like that, which would be in the witchcraft mysteries. But like I said, this touches on subjects, subject matter of abuse, and consent and stuff like stuff like that man it it's crazy because i'm reading this happy-go-lucky book but the subject matter and the stuff that it's saying is 
tough. It's it's a tough subject. And so, look, this is a five star. It's going on my favorites, and I could not be more happy. This is just a this is just adorable, and I. I'm so glad that I, I read this. Like, I was not expecting this to be anything like it was. I thought that it would just be like, you know, a baking cozy mystery. Those shallow cozy mysteries that don't dig too deep on like abuse and consent, those can be good. But this one is even better because it has the heart and the whimsy of those, those types of mysteries while tackling. A heavier subject matter and also I believe Daisy is bisexual I don't know if she flat out says it but um, it is portrayed I can't quite remember but Daisy is a bisexual woman who has some love interests in her life and um, just a strong bitch so now that we have enjoyed a comfy cozy let's switch it over to a thriller and let's find out what Kyla thinks about what Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I love Kate Alice Marshall. I have quickly become a huge fan. She is definitely one of my top authors. I just freaking love her and her writing and the way she does spooky so well. Love it. So this is her debut adult novel. This book has so much going on, but I think it was executed really well. Do I think it was the most groundbreaking thriller? No, but I really enjoyed the way that Kate Alice Marshall brought it to life. When it comes to this book, you can see the reflection of my window that is giving me beautiful natural light. I have completely finished this book and not checked in with y'all once. Now let me finish. I had put in my little headphones and I was gonna have a day just audiobooking, doing the spring cleaning, maybe work in the yard some more. Y'all don't need to know all that so let's get into the actual book. I was going to start one of my quirky little cozy mysteries and just have that be like mindless while I go about my day, but I was like, let me go ahead and start this one. Let me start this one, get a feel for it. I finished it all in one day. I started it and I didn't stop. Like, pedal to the metal. Since I wasn't be able to check in because whenever I am cleaning house, it does not look like this. The face is melted, textured, rotten, horrible. So I took notes in my little notebook. I started taking notes around 40% in and I said the writing is vivid and gives Gillian Flynn vibes. And by Gillian Flynn vibes, I mean sharp objects specifically, like the girl had something bad happen in her childhood. She goes back to her hometown. The thing bad that happened is not similar to sharp objects, but it's it's got that similar premise, like where everyone that she comes in contact with in her hometown, I'm suspicious of. I know it's not exactly like put that way, but the way that I read it, I was sus of everyone, with good reason, I would say. And at about 40% in, I had a few theories that were correct and that I, you know, was, I was like, okay, yeah, fine, 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 fine. Um, I gave it a 3.5, mostly because even though when the final twist happened, at that point, we'd had quite a few red herrings. The answer to this mystery is obvious. Red herring. Oh my God, it's red herring. I, I wasn't living for that, but the writing was so good and the story could have been a little bit tightened up a bit and not included so many red herrings or spaced it out a bit, like maybe the first red herring that I can't say what it is happened way earlier in the book. The the one that had to do with her childhood. I feel like I'm talking to Kyla specifically as well, but the one that had to do with the person that we thought did it. Let me just go ahead while I have this up, read what this book is about. Naomi Shaw used to believe in magic, which I really enjoyed how, I love how I read one sentence and I'm already off topic. Kate Alice Marshall started the book, there is a wilderness in little girls. We could not contain it. It made magic of the rain and a temple of the forest. We raced down narrow trails, hair flying, wind wild behind us and pretended that the slender spruce and hemlock were still the ancient woods that industry had chewed down to splinters. We made ourselves into warriors, into queens, into goddesses. Fern leaves and dandelions became poultices and potions and we sang incantations to the trees. 
honestly i can picture that exactly because what what child did not play outside and make potions and mud pies and all of that sort of stuff like that makes you feel like okay i can see who these girls are because you know i was them or i knew them okay 22 years ago naomi and her two best friends cassidy and olivia spent the summer roaming the woods imagining a world of ceremony and wonder the goddess game the game became an obsession and refuge for the three girls the sanctuary was suddenly shattered when naomi was attacked but miraculously she survived her 17 stab wounds and lived to identify the man who hurt her the girl's testimony put away a serial killer wanted for murdering six women they were heroes and they were liars for decades the friends have kept a secret that might be worth killing for hidden in the forest but now olivia wants to tell the whole story then she goes missing and naomi sets out to find out what really happened in the woods no matter how dangerous the truth turns out to be and i went into this and was like ready for a thrill these other two books that i'm reading this is cozy 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 i needed a thrill and i oh shit i'm dropping everything <laughs> and i was here for it i really enjoyed it it was a nice um bridge between these two other books and it was a pretty good thriller i totally get what kyla sees in kate alice marshall's writing this one was okay like it's a good little thriller i think that if we shave down some of the red herringness of it and the misdirection which some people do like that but i think that it could have been timed a little bit better but her writing is so good that it makes up for those mistakes. But I'm not obsessed, but I love it, okay? And I love that um, Kyla loves it. I, I definitely see that in the writing and like the passage that the, the book begins with. It's a perfect Kyla thriller and I was here for it. We've finished the cozy mystery. We have finished the thriller. So now it's time for Legends and Lattes, a cozy fantasy. This book is five stars. I freaking love this book so much. It was so fun. It was exactly what I needed. It is so cozy. It's found family. It's everything that I love in fantasy. Oh my God. And I am so excited for this book. Like, y'all, so many people love this. And so I, if I think I'm gonna love a book, I tend to put it off because I'm scared I won't love it or i'll love it and then i'll be like do i only love this because everyone else does like i get so anxious about stupid shit like that but listen up i think i'm gonna love it because i love coffee as a matter of fact i'm about to go make me some coffee right now in my mug that kyla got me <laughs> <laughs> lame this golden girls mug which is prominently featured a lot because this is my daily mug i am so like this is my prized possession that kyla got me for my birthday last year and i love it so much because it's just so special when you make friends that pick up on like what like the, the dumb shit you like that isn't even bookish really but i love this bitch so much so now it's time for legends and lattes and this is a very coffee heavy book i started it in uh i started the audiobook because in the mornings whenever i'm driving the kids to school and stuff i'll throw on an audiobook and i like for when the kids are in the car I like for them to not be too much stuff. So this is safe. I was just so happy to listen to this and I was cracking up. Sometimes my struggle with fantasy is like visualizing things. So I love that the cover of this book is vividly portraying our Viv. It starts off with like a bang and then it's like, let's chill out. Let's just chill out. And open a coffee shop and no one in this town knows about coffee because Viv is trying to open this coffee shop so she hires someone to help her like make I guess I should actually drink my coffee I think it's like a horse stable that she's like gutting and redesigning into her little cafe the guy is like let's make you a kitchen and Viv is like why do I need a kitchen I'm, I'm making coffee they don't get 
the appeal of coffee. So he's like, yeah, but if nobody wants your bean water, maybe you could serve them food. That's not an exact quote, I'm butchering it. So brew yourself some coffee, some, some hot bean water and let me know in the comments if y'all have read this yet like it like i feel like so many people have been loving it listening to it has made me want to listen to some other voice acting work that mr travis baldry has done because he is a narrator for the last dungeon crawler carl book or maybe all of them i just know he's on like the last one because this is my husband's favorite book series and he is on like his fourth re-listen of these and whenever we go on our little road trip to dallas i'm making him start over from the beginning because i want to listen now so we're going to be driving along listening together to dungeon crawler carl and i'm excited for it y'all this is so cute and honestly i think there's some pastries involved eventually, I think, from what I've heard. So I'm really excited for that. I love my coffee. I love my, I love, I love the vibes. So let's keep going. I'm on chapter five. And if this isn't like such a vibe, like Kyla has made my life better because here I am with a, with a mug of coffee reading a fantasy book about coffee. Couldn't, couldn't get any better than this. All my bad thoughts feel premeditated Treat every sickness like medication Wish that tomorrow just hesitated Just need a moment to set it straight Send me back, let me make things right I do everything different, I take my time Okay, so I just finished chapter five and I think that we have met Tandri, our succubus. I don't know if there's a romance in this, but it, I mean, if there is, I'm down for it, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the synopsis a little. It's, it tells us that Viv has had a lifetime of bounties and bloodshed. So Viv has been out fighting and, and doing all these orcish things, which I don't know what orcs are from. Is that Lord of the Rings? Am I am I nerding that correctly? And now Viv is weary of that life, and so she wants to settle down in Thune, like put down roots, and open a coffee shop in a place where people don't know about coffee. Uh, people, I'm using that term very loosely. So. I just finished my coffee, my fourth cup, which Viv knows all about drinking a fourth cup of coffee. And so she knows she won't, won't be able to go it alone. And I think that that is where the part in the book where I have just finished off and the true rewards of the uncharted path are the travelers you meet along the way. And whether drawn together by ancient magic, a flaky pastry or a freshly brewed cup, they may become partners, family, and something deeper than she ever could have dreamed. Found family? Kyla! Kyla! You know what, Kyla? I, I just gotta say, your found family bullshit hits me right in the feels here. I love it so much. I gotta say, I'm really excited to finally get in to Legends and Lattes. Okay, I guess that's good enough. I'm in my kitchen because the lighting is really good in here. I have a skylight and I love that bitch, except for whenever it's gonna start getting really hot outside. I just didn't wanna update you in my same chair spot that I'm always in because it looks like I never leave it, but I've been going between the audio and reading the audio and reading with my eyeballs i leave my chair i promise anyway so i am about 30 something percent through i am on chapter 11 and i am loving tandri and vid and now the cat that is named amity i believe it was cute 
whatevs and I'm just having a grand old time. I think it's gonna be kind of fun and cute and I think I'm gonna love it. I don't know if I'm gonna be obsessed with it though, but I'm loving it, having a good time with this. And I think this is gonna be my last update for the day. I might finish this. God, I hope the sound is all right because my dishwasher is very loud, but I think this might be my last update for today because I really wanna go work in my yard. And so this is just gonna melt off. And like I said, I'm just gonna turn rotted. I guess that's it for right now. I will check in with y'all in a little bit and give you my final thoughts on Legends and Lattes. Bye. Legends and Lattes is so good. I'm almost finished with it. I look like trash, but I love Tandry and Viv and <sighs> It's not perfect. It might be a five star, maybe like a 4.75. I don't know. I love the, this fantasy element, even though these aren't humans, but they're still like dealing with human things. Oh my God. Basic bitch discovers fantasy, but it's like, Tandry is a succubus so there's like preconceived notions of who she is and how she will act and be perceived and the things that she wanted to do in her life she faced a lot of um is discrimination the right word I suppose because like whenever Tandry wanted to go to school the school let her in because it was like the the law said that she could go to that school or whatever but she was treated so poorly i really love tangerine i finished legends and lattes and i believe that this is going to be a favorite for me i might have to buy my own copy as a matter of fact because you know i like having my own copy of books and this is just such a cute little book. I rated it, I think, at like a 4.75. I don't know why. I guess I'm just such a little bitch like that. I loved Handry so much. So the prequel wouldn't have her in it since they met in this book, correct? But I saw the cover of the prequel and it has like a little pug owl dog thing and I'm really obsessed with that. I'll have to go see what Kyla thinks of the prequel, Bookshops and Bone Dust, and then get into that because this this was a knockout. It hit it out of the park. I think I like Magic Lies and Deadly Pies a little bit more. I think that's why it's like five, 4.75. And then what did I give What Lies in the Woods? A three something, I know that. You really can't see. Oh, don't look at my face. Um, but yeah, so this is the order of the, the way I love the books. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. I had so much fun this week filming this. I think I want to do this again with my friend Book Barbie, who, uh, only does bookstagram, faceless bookstagram, but that's okay. I still love you, girl. Because there are quite a few books that she has told me to read or that she's been obsessed with that I'm like, uh because a few of them are like literary fiction and I have not been in a lit fic mood but more recently I've been I've been feeling lit ficky and I've just had like a super good mix of genres here so I I think going into a more lit fic type situation could be good all right let's let's go to bed actually I'm gonna watch some Nemo's dreamscapes on YouTube they're live and they're one of my favorite lives because they play like old-timey music in another room I love that shit anyways thank you so much for watching my video and um, follow me on Instagram and all that stuff I love sharing my bookish thoughts with all of you oh okay oh the bookmark fell out cool <laughs>